the ZE test, it's an important test and it's a measurement of the external earth fault loop impedance of the supply line conductor, the transformer windings and the earth return path. Now it's ZE, it's external, Z impedance, E external, external to the building. So we've got our house with our fuse board in all our electrical installation and we're testing the incoming supply line and the earth return path. Now this is an important test because it confirms the presence of an earth connection. And it's also used further down the line in your ZS tests when you're testing the installation internally. We need the ZE reading so we can get that ZS. Now you can either inquire to the DNO about this reading, what your ZE is, but to be honest you might as well ask the CAT because they will just give you the maximum reading if that often they just say they don't know. Um, and even if you do ask, if, even if you do inquire, you've still got to verify that you've got a, an earth return path. So it's a test that needs to be done. Okay. So here we have a more detailed picture of this setup. So we've got the external part that we're testing, the transformer in the street. That sends power into the building through your service fuse, through your main switch into any protective devices, onto the appliances, returns on the neutral, back to your transformer in the street. This is alternating current, of course. We're not going to get into that at the moment. We're just doing a simple return paths, and we're testing this ZE. Now, you might have a different... There's different types of earthing systems you can get supplied. The DNO will either give you a TNCS or a TNS, or you might have to provide your own earthing system. That will be a, a TT. So this is the actual installation in its entirety. We're going to strip this down a little bit. I think it's important to understand the relationship of ZE to the rest of the installation. The ZE is the external part. We also have the internal part of the property, the fuse board and all your current using pieces of equipment. And this is measured when you're with the R1 plus R2. R1 is your line conductor going to your protective device into the, the plug socket or whatever it is and the R2 is your CPC going back to the fuse board. This is your protective conductor. So the ZE is external and your R1 plus R2 is internal. And When you combine them both together you get the ZS which is your earth fault loop impedance for the entire installation. So your ZE plus your R1 and your R2 gives you your ZS. And the ZS is normally written as ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. Like I say, that's your earth fault loop impedance. That's important to remember. Anyway, we're going to get back on to actually testing the ZE. Right, we're about to do our ZE test. There's a couple of things still we need to think about. A ZE test should be as close as possible to the origin of the supply. That's when it comes into the property. You're in your consumer unit here, testing the main switch between the incoming line conductor and the earthing conductor. What is this earthing conductor? We need to make sure that there's nothing before the fuse board. Is there an isolator, a fuse switch before the fuse board? If you do have an isolator or fuse switch before your fuse board, that's where you should take your ZE from. It's got to be as close as possible to the origin of the supply. And also, we want to check this earthing conductor as well. We're going to talk about this because there might be other connections off this earthing conductor, the main earthing terminal. If there's other connections coming off it, you could be getting parallel paths. So, if we have an isolator on a switch fuse before our consumer unit or distribution board, we would take our ZE reading from there. The ZE reading has to be as close as possible to the origin of the supply. But there's one more thing I want to go through as well. Is See this main earthing terminal here? Let's have a quick look at that. Right, so what's happening here? We're going to do our ZE test and we think that's fine. We're at the consumer unit. We're going to test between line and the earth. There's no switch fuse beforehand. This is just a service cutout, so I'm okay to test from here. But let's follow this green and yellow conductor down. It goes to a main earthing terminal. 
And at this terminal, we have the earthing conductor connected. We've also got a main protective bonding conductor. Now, we need to check that there's a means of earthing, that we have a supply earth. And we get that from the earthing conductor. The earthing conductor is a connection between the means of earthing and the main earthing terminal. There's only one main earthing terminal in any installation. So this is where we need to be testing from. We need to be testing from this earthing conductor to know that this is the connection between the first connection between our installation and the transformer. The problem here is that we've got a parallel path. We've also got an earthing path going down to this water pipe, which is an extraneous conductive part. This is connected to earth. This will give us an earth reading if we're doing our loop test. But there's another issue here as well. This cable sheath, this metal cable sheath, which is our continuous earth back to the transformer, we notice there's a break in that sheath. So therefore, this earth path is not continuous. And this is what we're doing when we're doing our ZE test. We're testing that we've got a continuous earth path. The earth path goes back to the transformer, returns on the line. That's our earth fault loop. But because we've got this second connection, we've got a connection to this gas pipe, sorry, this water pipe, with main protective bonding conductors, this is going to give us an earth. The problem here is, is that we might think we have an earth reading, we get a nice low reading. Um, we think, yes, good, we've got, a, we've got a ZE, that's my ZE. But it's not your ZE, we're getting a parallel path. And if the water board come along at some point and replace this water main with a plastic main, that means we've got no earth whatsoever. So the installation will not be earthed. So it's important when you're doing your ZE test the actually testing at the means of earthing. It'll be the earthing conductor coming off the sheet or off the uh, TNCS supply. So you've got to be careful that you are testing at the point of origin of the earth and you haven't got any parallel paths that can give you an incorrect reading. Right, so we're almost ready to do our ZE test. And this is a live test. The main switch is off. We're isolating the insulation from the supply because we are going to temporarily disconnect the earthing conductor. And we're disconnecting the earthing conductor to verify that no other paths are creating a parallel connection to earth. So this is a live test, so it should only be done by a skilled person. But when you're doing your training, you'll be assisted by somebody who's got the relevant skills and knowledge to do this test safely. So anyway, let's get on with it. We're doing the safe isolation first. Check that everything's switched off because we're disconnecting the main earth and conductor. We select an appropriate test meter, which is our earth for loop impedance meter, set on the right setting. We check the meter's working and the leads are in good condition and GS38 compliant. We know what kind of earthing system we've got. Also know what kind of results to expect. We don't want to be doing this, then going away and thinking, is that right? And then come back and have to do it all again. So know what kind of results to expect. And then we disconnect our earthing conductor. We test between the line and the earth with our meter. We record our reading. And then before we do anything else, we reconnect the earthing conductor immediately. Don't go away, write your results down and think about it. As soon as you finish the test, reconnect the earthing conductor. So you know that the safety systems are put back in place for the installation. Okay, so we've taken our test, uh, we've reconnected the main earthing conductor, and we can look at the results. The R maximums for the TNCS and TNS. TNCS is a maximum of 0.35 of a norm. TNS, a maximum of 0.8 of a norm. TT, we're going to do in a different video because that's a little bit more involved. We're just going to concentrate on the earthing system supplied by the DNO. So TNS, 0.8. TNCS, 0.35. You should really be getting a little bit lower than that. I'm, for both systems, I'm kind of averaging around about 0.12, 1.3. Um, that kind of reading it shows you've got quite a good connection to Earth. If you're getting higher readings than that, if you're getting higher than the maximum, and you're convinced and you're happy that you've done the testing correct, correctly, and your probes are on nice and tight, and everything is nice and tight, connections and everything, and you're still getting high readings above the maximum, it's time to get in touch with the DNO and they're going to have to come out and um, have a look why you're getting a high ZE reading. 
um, that's down to them then. We can't do anything about it. If you've got a high reading, there's nothing we can do about it. If we're happy that everything on our side is good, I would make this correct. We've done the testing correctly. If we still got a high ZE, it's time to call the, the DNO out and they'll come and investigate what's wrong with their earth. Right, let's quickly go through what we've done. We're doing a ZE test, which is a live test. It's only done by a skilled person, not under the instruction of a skilled person. The installation is isolated because we're disconnecting the main earth. We're testing the earth fault loop path from the transformer to the origin of the supply. So that's the line conductor and the means of earthing back to the transformer. We tested the origin of the supply, whatever that may be. We disconnect the earth and conductor temporarily so we don't get any parallel paths and we're only checking that we have a means of earthing back to the transformer. We test between the line and the earthing conductor and take our reading. Once we've done our reading, once we've done our test, we immediately reconnect the earthing conductor. And of course, the during the test, the installation is isolated and off. If you do any further subsequent tests at other distribution boards, for example, that is known as your ZDB, your test between the line and the circuit protected conductor. And you do not disconnect any earthing. The earthing conductor is connected. The main protective bonding conductor is connected. All the, all the earth are in place when you're doing your ZDB tests. There's only one ZD test and that's only at the origin. You only just connect the earthing terminal, the earthing conductor, when you're doing your ZD test. All of the tests, all the earthing is in place. So that's your ZE test. <laughs>